It's okay. You get used to it anyway. So the first kind of training we go through is what we call induction. Why is it induction? It's induction because you are being introduced to how things are working. They introduce you to new things. That is induction. So you have to say, okay, when people start a new job, they are likely to receive some induction training. So you get this kind of training because you are starting a new job. You are starting your, you are now part of a new environment. And for you to understand how to behave in such an environment, they need to tell you. You need to know how to behave in this kind of new environment you, you find yourself. So, this has new recruits. Who are the new recruits? New employees. Settle in and become familiar with their new surroundings, like I just said earlier, your new environment. You need to settle down. You need to acclimatize. You need to fine tune yourself into the system. And you won't be able to do these things without being trained. That is why it's important. Mm -hmm. So this might lead to poor productivity. Okay, so if you are not inducted, you might not be able to work. You might not be able to do well. You might not be able to perform. That means you're not performing because you're not, you don't know what you're supposed to do. So let's say the complete of the workplace. Induction training one, introduced to job and direct work on it. So what are the kinds of induction training that we have? The first one said introduction to job and direct work colleagues. So, oh, you're an accountant. Welcome to the Department of Finance. These are the works you're going to do. These are your colleagues. These are the people you're going to work with. So that is a kind of induction. So introducing introduction to senior staff. You need to know those that are ahead of you in the organization. It's still part of training. If not, someone might give you an order you wouldn't want to follow. Yeah. Someone might give you an order that you wouldn't want to follow, but as soon as you know it's, it's, it's ahead of you, you will listen. You, you can mentor you. Do you get the point here? Yes. The third one, company history, aims, and objective. Through the training, you'll be able to understand what the company is standing for. The history about the company, you get to know. The objectives that you have, the goals that have been set by the company, you get to know. Is this guy? Is it clear, please? Yes. yes. Company policies. When we talk about company policies, we're talking about the dress code, the ways, the practice, the culture within the organization. It's important. The rules, the don'ts, and the do's in the organization you get to know through induction training. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the do's and the don'ts. And the last one, health and safety training. Yeah. How to use equipment. How not to ensure, how to ensure that you are safe at all things. How you must not jeopardize your life at work. You need to be trained on it, especially for those that have to use different machines. Are they clear? So all these things are gone through with induction. So this is the kind of what we call induction training. Any question about induction training? Remember we said induction training comes when you are being, when you are being employed as a new staff. So they need to put you through what you need to know the do's, the don'ts in the organization, those that you have to report to in the organization, those that you're working with in the organization, the environment, the culture, the policies of the organization, all these things come through the, all these things come through the induction. Any question about induction? No. Shall we move on? Yes. Thank you. All right. The second one, on-the-job training. We call it on-the-job training because you are at work and you are being trained. You are not leaving the premises of the organization. You are being trained within the organization. Do we get on the job yet? On the job. You are being trained. You are going through training, but it's within the premises at the workplace. So one of the most common methods of training is on the job training. This means that workers are trained in the workplace, at the premises. You are within the premises and you are, getting, you are having your training. Do you get it? Do you get it, please? Yeah. While they are doing their job, I already explained that. I said, watching them. So, what are the kinds of on the job training that we can have in an organization? Number one, watching another worker. We call it shadowing. Like you are copying, you are, you are watching that. Okay, I have experience already. And you are newly introduced to the company. So, you watch what I do, you shadow what I do. That is one of on-the-job training. 
Do you get the point here? Yeah. You are watching me as a colleague. But why are you watching me? You're watching me because I have more experience in the job than you. So you are going to, you are going to train me based on shadowing me. Do you understand watching on another colleague? Work no, you're not told to do that. You're doing it yourself. No, no you will be told. Yeah. Remember in induction, they said, during induction, you'll be introduced to your colleagues. You'll be introduced to your senior staff. So, as far as induction is done, you start to understand how, the, how you work. Induction is not going to train you the job. In, it's not going to train you the job. Basically, you have to be in the job before you understand the job. And that can be done through all the job training. Do you get it? So, one kind of on the job training is watching another worker. So, you are colleagues, but he has experience more than you. So, you can watch him, you can shadow him to understand how the job goes. Is this one clear? Yes. The second one, mentoring. For mentoring, here you have a direct link with someone, with more idea, with more experts. So, he watches what you do, he trains you on how to get it done. When you are making a mistake, he tells you. That's mentoring. It, you take that individual like your mentor. <coughs> like you did. Yeah. So look at what you wrote. He said, is where a, tra a trainee? Who is a trainee? Someone that's going through the training. We have the trainer. The trainer is the person training you. You that you are going through under you, you that you are undergoing the training. You are called the trainee. I think you understand the idea, please. Okay. So mentoring is where a trainee is paired with an experienced member of staff for a given period. So you are being paired with that individual who might be your colleague or a senior staff because he has more experience than you do. So you are together, then you watch through what he does or what she does. It could be a woman, it could be a man. Do you understand mentoring here? Yes. You are being paired. It's not the same as watching another worker. When you are watching, that means you are shadowing, you are copying what he does. He's not your mentor or she's not your mentor. But for your mentor, you have been paired, sit side by side, to let you know what you are doing. Do you understand? Is it clear, please? The third one, job rotation. For job rotation, you have been taken through different departments to understand how each department works. That's how job rotation is here. It's also an on-the-job training. So you are in finance department this week. To understand how finance department work. Next week you're in the logistic department. Next upper week you're in the maybe the general service department. So they take you through different departments so that you can understand how the company works. That is job rotation. Is it clear? Yes. Still part of still another kind of on the job training. The next one is. I think that's all, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So now we go to the advantages of the advantages and disadvantages of on the job training. So, the first one, output is being produced. How is output produced? Because you are at the job, you are on the job. You are being trained and you're still working. So, you are producing. Either goods or service. Do you get the point here? Yes. Production continues. That means there's production. There is what? Production. That is the point. Is it clear? The second one, relevant because you need to learn by actually doing the job. It is relevant because you will be trained on what you are going to start doing. So the training is not a waste. It's relevant. It's important. You working there. So that is why you are that is why you are taking the job. So it is relevant because you will be trained on what you will start doing. Do you get the second point here? Yes. Is it clear, please? Yes. The third one. Cheaper than other forms of training. Cheaper than any other forms of training. Yeah, it is cheap because the company is using its members of staff to train the new recruits. So no money is wasted. What? No money is wasted. No more yeah. water. No money. no money. Expenses. Use the expenses, please. Okay. It's it's less expensive. It is less expensive yeah. because here you are not spending. Yes, not, you don't incur more expenses outside the organization. So uh, yeah, I'm a new worker. You have been there before. You are training me. The company might not pay you for that. Do you get the point? And if the company might, even if the company wants to pay you, it's not going to be as much as 
You hire. need to be trained from outside of the company. Hiring someone to train. Hiring someone to train you. Do you understand why it is cheap here? Yeah? Yeah. And the last one, can easy to be organized. You don't need to, you don't have to make uh, a schedule for that. Oh, Mr. Muhammad, someone is going to join you today. We're going to pair you with someone. You have to train him or her. It's just what we can just talk about. We don't have to make a proposal. We don't have to send um, schedules for that, or proposal or application for that. Do you understand the advantages about on the job? Yes. The first one is that production is conti production continues. It is cheap, but it is cheaper than any other forms of uh, training. It is relevant because you are actually doing what you start, you will start doing at the workplace, and it is easy to organize. So what are the problems we encounter using on-the-job training? Number one, how to maybe lost if workers make mistakes. If I'm being paid, or maybe I'm shadow I'm shadowing Fahad. So if in the course of me shadowing him, I made a mistake, I have to start again. So it's a waste of time. It's a waste. So how to is lost because I have made some mistake. You can't give customers goods that are not okay. That lacks quality. So as soon as you make a mistake, you have to redo or rework. Do you understand the first point? The sec do you understand, please? Yeah. The second one may be stressful for the worker, particularly working with others, if working with others. If I have to train an individual that he or she is not willing or doesn't have that um, motivation. motivation to get the, or don't, it's lacking yeah. Yeah, to learn. So it might be frustrating. Or I might not be good at even training someone. Yeah. Do you get the point? Yeah, they want me to train, but I don't like training. I don't like training someone. I'm not good at it. So this could be frustrating. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It's all about Is that okay? Or could be a danger to others. For example, yeah, it could be dangerous. How? This could basically be for maybe the doctors. When you have to put someone to training, a surgeon, and he has to practice, or she has to practice using human. So mistakes could happen. Could happen. Leading to death. Leading to death. Do you understand? So it could be dangerous. Do we get it? Yes. Any question about on the job? Are we good with it? Yes. Now we go to off the job. So why do we call it off the job training? We call it off the job because it involves training outside the premises of the organization. So we have been trained by some specialist company. Do you understand all the job? You have been trained by some specialist company. So it is outside the business organization. So it says some employees receive training away from the normal work area. This is called off the job. I explained that. So let's just go to the advantages. The first one. How to is not affected if mistakes are made. So it is off the job. You are not working in the company. So whatever mistakes you make, it is part of the learning process. You're not doing anything. It's serious. Because you're not working and giving output. Yeah, what yeah, you better say it this way that it's a learning process. So whatever mistakes you make is a learning process. Do you get it's not like you're not doing anything, you're doing something. It's training. Yeah, it's training. Your mistakes are not affecting the company. Yeah, so what about, just put it this way, whatever mistake you make is part of what? The learning process. Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Yes. Great. The second one, then it cannot be distracted by work. Here, because it's all the job, you're not working. Yeah. So if I have to train you, I'm training you, I'm not even part of your company. So I'm just training you because you are, you are paid for that. So. The trainer, the trainer is not going to be affected. His job is not going to be affected. There's no way you want to train someone. It's going to take much of your time. It's going to take much or less of your time. Yes or no? Yes. So that could distract you from you actually doing your job. But here, it's not going to affect because the trainer... The only job he has is to train. The trainer is, uh, is a facilitator. All he has or she has to do is to facilitate. It's just to train you. That is the job he's been or she's been paid for. Do you understand? Yes. The third one. Training could take place outside work hours if necessary. 
So because it's off the job, you can even take it, you can do it on weekends. Maybe on the Saturday, on the Friday, on the Sunday, you can go through training. So they might arrange or organize the training outside the work hour. So it doesn't affect the workers. These are the advantages of off the job. Is it clear? Yes. Are you sure it's clear? Yes. Yeah. So go to the problem. Okay, the last one. Customers and others are not put at risk. Yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna affect anything. You're not producing. So whatever you do out there is not going to affect the production of yes. goods or services. Is it clear? Yes. Great. So we go to the problems now. The first one. No, no because employees do not contribute to work. Yes, they all are out of the You are it out of the job. Offer. You are out of the job. So you're going to get paid. The company is going to pay you for doing nothing. Mm. Do you get it? Yes. Yeah, yes. you, you become a member of staff. You are working in the organization, but you've gone for training. So in the course of you going for training, you are not producing anything for the company, but you get paid for it. Yes. You are being trained, yes. Who Outside. Pays you, the company or the the company. As long as you have the job, as long as you have the job, you get you have entitled. You are entitled to salary. Well, yes or no? Some companies will ask you to finish your training first and then you can start. No, no, no. They pay. You have to pay. Let, okay, let me give you some examples. Okay, let me give you examples. Like, when I wanted to start working in the bank, uh, that was 2007. What the first thing we did was, after the interview, after the shortlisting and interview, they, they called us for training. Two weeks training. The two weeks training, we, be, we are already the staff of the company. So it starts counting, our salary starts counting. Our small, the company is not going to train you if you are not going to be useful for it. Yes. So from the, day, from the first day of training, you, you become a staff of that organization and you get paid for that. And why is that a disadvantage? It's a disadvantage because a disadvantage. I am, listen, it is advantage because at that point in time, I'm being paid but I'm not working. For the company, it's not an advantage, it, but for you, it's an advantage. In the long run, it's an advantage for the company too. Yes. Because as soon as you are done with training, it will be useful for your productivity. Yes. But what we have to understand is, what are, the, what, are the, what are the lapses that could occur in the off-the-job training? That is the point. There are good things. There are good things about good training. Is good. It's better. It's important. But it has its own lapses. They want us to figure out the lapses. They want us to figure out the lapses, the problems of all the job. So whatever it is, we have to figure it out. Do you get the point here? Yeah? Yes. So some of the job training. Uh, is expensive if provided by specialists. Yeah, specialists are, you know, when you have a specialist, you have to pay more. So it's expensive. But no, look at it and say, trained by specialists. Just imagine if you are being trained by specialists, you get better, yes or no? Yes. It's good for you, it's an added value to you, an added value to the company. But because it's expensive, it's a disadvantage. Do you get the point? Yeah. Yes. So master of work cannot be taught off the job. When you are in off the job training, the company that is training you doesn't understand your operations. The company is just going to train you some things about what you are going to do. On the job will train you better because in on the job it is relevant. Yes, you are, you are learning. What you, you, are, are you are learning real life. But off the job, they are just going to give you. Yeah. For a preview or brief about it. It's not going to be like real day now. It's not going to be like reality. Do you get it? Yes. It's all the job. The company that is training you is not part of your company. It's a, it's a training center. So they're just going to train you what they can train you, what they have access to. But the real thing that you're going to do, you might not be able to learn it through of the job. Let's say an example on the job of training, like when you start working in a supermarket, like uh, as a cashier or or anything else. Okay. Yeah, it's it's on the job training. You cannot like 
You cannot learn it outside. Yeah. You can. Yeah. They might think they might train you on how to they might train you on customer care. How to interact with customers. Mm -hmm. It could be a training. It could be done off the job. It depends on the company. How rich or wealthy the company is. It depends on how the company is taken, uh, how serious the company is when it comes to customer service. Do you get my point? Yeah. Training doesn't require us to be off the job or on the job. It depends on how buoyant the company is. Do we get it? Yes. Any question, please? Wow. Alright, thank you. Training in health and safety. Health and safety are important. They are part of legal control. So, he said, in many occupations, in many occupations, the workplace can be a dangerous environment because of the poten because of this potential danger. Governments are aimed to protect workers with legislation that forces businesses to provide health and safety. So. The work environment could be dangerous, and they don't want you to expose yourself to those dangers. So what will happen? Government will come up with laws that would force businesses to take care of your health while working. Do we get the point? Do you get the point or not? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Like working in a factory or something like that. Yeah. Training in health and safety, it's basically how the government comes up with different laws, different legislation to ensure that businesses take care of their employees, like not exposing them to dangers that might occur in the company. Mm -hmm. Do you understand now? That's health and safety. So, for example, using a, a maintenance safety equipment, all these are different kind of Things that you go through that you have to understand while working. Just to protect you, not to die at work. That is the point. Not to expose yourself to different hazards that could happen at workplace. How you have to use safety equipment, whatever it is, extinguishers and the rest. They just want to make sure that you are not endangering your life because of the job. That is health and safety. Is that our safety care uh, understood? Yes. yes. It's basically on how to make sure that you're not exposing yourself to the dangers that could occur at workplace. So government comes up with different laws, forcing businesses to ensure that workers are safe while at work. Claire? Yes. Yes. Now, the benefits of training. Yes. Thank you. So we've talked about different kinds of training we have. So what are the importance of training? Importance is the same as benefit. The first one, keeping workers up to date. With training, you become updated. You know the latest about workplace, the latest about your job, the latest about your responsibility. Is the first one clear? Yes. Should I ask something about it? No. OK. Do you understand keeping workers up to date here? It means you are making sure that workers understand the latest about the workplace, the latest about their jobs, the latest about their functions, the latest about their responsibilities. That's why you are being trained. Is it clear? Yes. The second one, improving labor of flexibility. So it allows you to become you know, mobile in terms of what you do. So if you can do this, you can do that. That means you are flexible. Because now you could become multi skilled. Do you get it? The third one, improving job satisfaction and motivation. With training, if businesses spend work out, if businesses, I guess it yes. Training motivates workers because it's an added value to them, especially if businesses spend on workers. So training is one of the ways in which workers become motivated because their skills are improved without them paying nothing. And as soon as that is done, they are satisfied, they are happy. Because they feel the company puts them in mind. They feel they have future in the company. The company is not going to train you if it's going to sack you in the next two years. If the company doesn't see the future in you, the company is not going to train you. 
Your employers are not going to train you if you are not going to be an added value to them. As a result, if you have been trained, you feel like, oh, the company or your employers, they value you. And that makes you happy. Do you get it? Yeah. So sometimes, owing to expansion, new products and new technology, new jobs are created. This often means that some staff will need to be retrained. If we have new jobs, if we have new products available, or if you are having new services to render, so you need to train new workers, or you need to train old workers about your new production. If not, they won't be able to deliver. Do you get the point about new job here? Yes. If you are creating, maybe there's a new product now. You need to train your workers how to use the new product, how to sell the new product. That means you have to retrain them on how to sell that product or sales. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? Promotion. Before you are being promoted in a company, before you are being promoted, you need you will be trained. Because now you are you are being uh, elevated. You are having a new position. How are you going to be able to cope with this position? You need to go through training. So most of the time, when people go for training, it means because they want to be promoted. Do we get it? Yes. Any questions about that? Um. Shall we move on? Now, the limitations. What are the problems about training? The first thing about training is the cost of training. It's expensive. Training can be very what? It's expensive. It takes a lot of money for businesses. And why, why do businesses feel reluctant to train workers? They feel if they train you, you might choose to leave. And when you are leaving, there's nothing they could do. They can't cut off your head. Yeah. You have the skills already and you have the knowledge. There's nothing they could do. And you are leaving there. So that's why they consider training. They, they feel reluctant to train. Do you get the point? Yeah. That's the first one. The second one, learning by doing. The second, some businesses might argue that training is limited because workers do not really start learning how to do jobs until they start the work itself, not training. So you, most of the time, things you do, you learn through it. Do you get my point? Yes. It's just like teaching. Teaching is, it's lifelong. You have to continue to be in it, then you get better. Not training. Training might not make you a better teacher. But with time, with experience, you get better. Do you get it? So why are we wasting money when we can get this thing done through, like, through in the job? Do you get the point? Yeah. The third one, loss of output. This is for all the job. Because if the, it's all the job, you're not going to be producing and you're getting paid. You are getting paid for it. Is it clear? Yeah, employees leaving. They have been trained. You know, as soon as you have been trained, you become attractive. To, your com to the competitors. If you work with business A, business B and C are your competitors. The workers of business A, as soon as they are being trained, business B and C will want to employ them. They are not spending anything. They will only attract you with salary. You are being trained already. So that is an ad advantage for them. Yes, so they want you. And if they, are, if they want to pay you more, you don't have any other choice than to go with them. So employees might leave. And when the employees leave, it becomes a, a problem for the business because they are going to their competitors, which is minus one for the company. They won't train them. <laughs> but you still have to train your workers because as soon as you train them, it improves their skills, it improves their knowledge, it improves, it increases productivity. And when productivity increases, output will increase, profit will increase. But it has problems. Workers wanting to leave. Waste of output. Yes. 